You probably know Boker knives from this, 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 or even this. But you probably didn't know that Boker has been making incredible handmade knives for over 300 years in the same area of Germany. Is this where you guys make Boker knives? This is how we did it in the past. <laughs> did it in the past, <laughs> okay. They survived wars, financial crisis, and even had their factory blown up. Through the best and worst times, Boker is focused on quality, innovation, and the art of knife making. With all that unique history, we had to come to Germany and find out what it was all about. So we're in Solingen, Germany, and to understand Boker's history, you have to understand Solingen's history. They go hand in hand. So we're going to go meet up with Karsten, the CEO of Boker, and he's going to teach us a little bit about why we're here. Karsten? Hey! Hey, how's it going? Hi, welcome to Soling. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so we're here to look at Boker knives. Is this yeah. where you guys make Boker knives? This is how we <laughs> did it in the past. Did Let's it in the it past, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Solingen has a rich history of knife and tool making that dates back to the Middle Ages when bladesmiths were busy making swords for crusading knights. Its location in the Wooper Valley made it an ideal spot for blacksmithing. The surrounding hills provided iron and coal for the forges, and the river powered grinding wheels which the bladesmiths used to hone the finished blades. Since 1605, wow. this cotton we say in Solingen is working. Watch your head. We come inside, you see the grinding wheels turning, and all this is driven by water power. Here you see the water wheel that you see from, so from outside. They had to exchange this every 10 to 20 years. And here you see the X coming in and then different gears. And then you can adjust the speed. German engineering. German engineering. <laughs> best. I love it. So I did, I did a little research on Solingen yeah. and, and this is called the, the Blade City. Correct. Solingen became prized by Northern Europeans for the quality blades and tools produced there. It's a city that grew up in the age of knights, kings, and lords. It seemed only fitting that Carson took us to one of the local castles to tell us more about Boker's story. That's right, the local castle. As a side note, castles are everywhere in Germany. Wow. All right, Carson. so we're sitting here in a castle in Solingen right. that is over 800 years old. And it seems like an appropriate place to talk a little bit about Boker's history. So yeah. you guys are also obviously based in Solingen, Germany for 150 years, but really it's been longer than that, right? Yeah, not quite as old as the castle, but a couple of years ago when Boker Mexico um, celebrated their 150th anniversary, original Boker family still uh, in charge there gave to us a tree and this family tree showed that the history goes back to 1674. In 1674, the Boker family registered a tree as a trademark for hand tools. Now my math isn't great, but that's over 300 years. Correct, <laughs> and that was proven. I'm Kirsten. I'm very happy to have you here at, at the Boker place and I'm managing the production. About how many knives a day do you guys turn out? It's between 300 and 1,000. It depends on, on the pattern we are producing. Now, on my way up here, I noticed I was seeing some CNC machines, mm -hmm. and then I was seeing some machines that look like they're 50, 60 years old. This is what Boker Germany does then. You guys are kind of bringing the past and the future together yeah. to make a quality product. That, that's true. So we've been on the shop floor. We've seen some of the equipment. I mean, some of that equipment that's operating today in your shop is literally older than most knife makers in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> there you see uh, yeah, machines built before the Second World War, um, but still in process. There's no industry to supply us, so we have to build up our own machines. Well, the benefit of that is, is if it breaks, you know how to fix it, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct, correct. We have two guys fully employed building machines and fix them. This is a machine that we built ourselves. It does grinding, cutting, and drilling. Of the scales? Yes. So no CNC technology, it's all mechanical. Yeah. But we also have, of course, the CNC. Yeah. 
this is like uh, other knife manufacturers do it as well. Yeah, exactly. We have that. We can do the modern way, of course. Yeah, robots. We have robots. We have CNC technique. We have all that and we, we, we use it, definitely. But certain steps in our production, it's for us at the moment still the best solution because our product has to show it's handmade. So first I show you the raw materials. It's, you know, all the special woods and not only palm or ABS or micada. Yeah. You know, like the very big, uh, big boys in the kitchen knife market. People love to see special material on the scales, but every material requires special treatment. <laughs> how to dry it, how to grind it, how to cut it, how to, you know, so you need a lot of experience. And it goes from, you know, several hundred years old uh, bog oak. Yeah. Right? We even did the dinosaur bones. What? Wow! If you find a combination um, of a special material, a special e event, and, and a cool story, if you make this triangle, yeah. then, then you have a hit, like with Kalashnikov or, or the Leopard Damascus. One day a knife uh, Damascus bladesmith came to us and put a, a metal ring on my, on my office desk and said, what do you think what that is? I said, I have no idea. Right. And he said, I cut this out of a barrel from a battle tank, from the German battle tank Leopard. And then he said, can we make Damascus blades out of this? Long story short, we directly saw the potential of yeah. this thing because the, uh, the battle tank Leopard is, is big in, in, in Germany. Right. Everybody who is kind of contact with the German army knows this is the tank. You have a kind of an understanding what kind of success that was. Special materials require special people, and Boker prides itself on the incredible craftsmen and women they employ to bring their knives to life. To guarantee the best possible craftsmen, Boker runs a unique apprenticeship program led by seasoned masters that have been making knives for decades. Well, we are in general in the lucky position that young kids really move from all parts of Germany to Solingen to work for Boker because they are knife nuts, right? Yeah, we've um, met a couple. <laughs> we've met a couple, and this is the best you can ask for. One guy is really talented, um, his name is Leonard. When he was a high school kid, he did a seminar at Boko, a sharpening seminar. His uncle gave it to him as a Christmas present. He was thrilled by this weekend class of sharpening knives. He said, wow, that, that's it. My name is Leonard, I'm 21 years old and I'm currently the head of the stamping and milling department. I graduated from high school in 2016 and afterwards I decided to not go to college and study. I wanted to do an apprenticeship. Last year I won the award as the best apprentice of the year of the trade. I was elected because of my good grades. Knives have always been my passion. It started with my first pocket knives. Um, a Victorian Ox when I was six years old. My grandfather gave it to me. I've kept that passion ever since. So I decided to become a knife maker and that's why I'm here. So you've been doing it for a few years now? Yeah. How do you feel about it still? I still love it. Still every love day. it. Yeah. <laughs> it. It doesn't feel as if I'm working, so it's, it's more like playing with knives every day. Everywhere we looked at Boker Germany, we saw the smiling faces of knife guys and gals who were genuinely excited about the work they were doing. At every stage of production, we saw dedicated craftsmen fully invested in making knives they would want to carry. At Boker, you get the real sense that knife making is not just a job, but a lifestyle. One very important thing for us is, is the, the people at Boker, you can see them in the product. The guy who learned this profession um, from scratch on um, in an apprenticeship in the Boker company, stays there for 20 years, has fun to work there and loves the product, has passion for the product and loves to make knives. This is the message that we want to tra transport to, to the customer. If the customer says, yes, I see this is handmade and I see the passion in the knife and this is why, why I like it and why I buy it.
This trip to Solingen and to Boca, Germany has been eye-opening to say the least. I wasn't sure what we'd find when we were getting ready for this trip, but what we ended up finding was the heart of Boker Knives. And with 150 years of history, with all the things that Boker's been through, all the things that they've survived, Boker may be the only knife company you can say. It'll be interesting to see what they're doing 150 years from now. So from Germany, from everybody here, thank you guys so much for following along. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Look at that guys, you buy one of these Bokers, I made half of it. <laughs> All right, so you know that knife in the video that you were seeing a lot of? This is a Blade HQ exclusive. We brought some back from Germany just for you guys. Hit the link in the description to get yours now.